The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. I think they were beeping while I played it. Maybe we need to play it again. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And they were early again. Uh, don't have that synced up quite yet. Anyway, uh, what else do we have uh, going on today? Uh, well, certainly we were out testing the lows today. I don't see a lot of reason to jump on the long side of the market. Um, I had one last short uh, that we set up from last week uh, that we were uh, out of this morning. And uh, eh, got pretty close to the top tick on it. Um, I wanted it. I was pretty sure that the Asian markets looked very weak. And after they came back, I was expecting them to start rolling over fairly quickly. Um, generally, when that happens, I like to go to the nuclear option, which is EDC, which is a uh, leveraged ETF uh, to the third world. Uh, we bought it under, eh, I think, low 41s and uh, sold it. And as it approached 49 this morning. So uh, another good trade this week. We've been uh, on fire in Fuego uh, this week as we continue to watch some of these things bounce around. Um, one of the things, uh, in fact, I was talking to uh, somebody this morning. I didn't get permission to talk to them. Uh, anyway, they were uh, uh, talking a bit about um, everybody being so bearish. And I said, I don't see the evidence of it. There's a handful of stocks uh, where people are horribly bearish. But the thing that I look at, and I get a sneeze. <laughs> I'm back from sneezing now. I'm not exactly sure why I got the sneeze going on here. Uh, but... Uh, Wanted you to look at this. It's in my daily newsletter every day. Uh, but I break up the put call ratios for the VIX and the equity uh, options uh, every day uh, just to see whether or not people are feeling uh, bearish or bullish. And when we got into yesterday, instead of spiking, normally the people that want to short the most short at the bottom. And the people that in if you really want to see a market roll over, uh, as you've heard me talk about, what you want is nobody to short at the top. We've been saying that probably for about the last 10 days uh, that there wasn't a lot of shorting going on. Unfortunately, I hear a lot of people actually telling me that there was. And I was kind of surprised. Uh, they just kind of think that there's shorting going on. I don't think they actually look at the numbers, or at least the numbers I'm looking at. But uh, when the put call came in, uh, at the end of the day yesterday at 42 percent uh, instead of something like 90 percent I thought well <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and hang on to my last short no reason to to bail out here uh, we scored on the other ones so what are we going to do well we we had to sit on it today and my guess is at the end of the night we're going to find everybody actually did start thinking about buying uh, puts, and that generally puts a floor in the market at least for a little while. Uh, but <clears throat> if you look at this chart at any time, anytime you approach about 90%, uh, you get a bounce that lasts generally a handful of days after that. Um, is it 100%? No, but is it 90%? Probably. Uh, I'm gonna have to do the numbers on it, but it's so, good at telling everybody that if when everybody gets bearish, generally it's over. And when everybody is in euphoric and can't pull the trigger 
short. They've given up. That's when the market falls fairly quickly. But, you know, are uh, conditions that bad? The answer is no. Uh, is this trade deal actually bad? I think you can uh, actually uh, say maybe short term, uh, the market reacts to it. Long term, hey, we put people back to work. We get steel companies back in production in the United States. We get Whirlpool um, producing washing, machine, washing machines here in the United States. Um, if we had to go to war, what would happen if everybody cut us off for the stuff that we no longer want to produce here in the United States? And what I, what I mean, no longer want to produce, um, if you have to have some kind of draconian EPA regulations and you can't do it here, and you just send it over China, all you're doing is sending all the pollution over there. So I don't think there's a lot of virtue in just saying, hey, we're not going to do it. Uh, and saying that we're going to dump it all on the poor Chinese folk. Um, we ought to, you know, I guess if we're going to do it, we should just say, hey, we're going to pay up for it. It's going to be a little bit more expensive. To me, I think it's going to be a hell of a lot cheaper on the long run, because if we have the ability to actually wage war, people are probably not going to go to war with us. If we're weak, if we're apathetic, if we're conciliatory, it's all the things that led up to World War II, and that is we don't like war, so therefore we're not going to actually act like we could ever do anything about it. And that's when tyrants um, actually decide that, well, <laughs> they're acting like they're weak. They must be weak. And so um, I think a lot of people kind of short term on the whole tariff issue. I think maybe uh, in the long term, and even maybe even the medium term, it may not be that long. Things may work out a lot better than you think. Uh, we put a lot of folks to work. Uh, couldn't be all bad. In the meantime, Chinese, uh, they lose $4 for every $1 we're going to lose uh, in uh, trade. Uh, that's not good for them. We're, the, of course, the biggest trading partner with them. Uh, and the question is just how much pain can they and if you listen to uh, Mr. Chanos of uh, Enron fame and others, he will tell you that their entire banking system is built on quicksand, and it, it's always been whether or not the wolf is going to blow on the building, we're going to find out it's made of straw. So maybe, maybe we just know in this negotiation, much like Jack Kennedy knew uh, in the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, when we found out that mm, probably 80% of their missiles would have blown up in the silo, and he thought he'd actually push uh, and get the kind of deal that you wanted because eh, things were going to fall our way no matter what. Uh, but uh, I think you can make a very good case that the Chinese are actually weak here, and we have the strong position. Uh, of course, history will tell us what it is, but uh, when everybody tells me uh, in the media uh, something, I generally have to pause and reflect and think that probably, as in most things, they don't know what they're talking about. We'll be back after a The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And uh, we had a, a good question in the den, then we're going to do some history. And that is, why do I spend more time on the VIX than anything else? And the reason is uh, that those are the options uh, in the out of the monies. And if you're a big hedge fund or something or a big fund of any kind and you're wanting to hedge your bets, um, you, you can go after individual stocks. But for the most part, you're just going to say, OK, I'm going to go ahead and hedge uh, the S&P stocks. And it's a lot tougher to get a number for all of the S&P stocks uh, than it is uh, for uh, just the ones that are in the VIX. They publish that because, uh, of course, the people have to uh, to let everybody know they're playing fair on the VIX. So it's a number that they actually do for us. Uh, and it has to, the math has to work out. People would catch it fairly quickly. So we know not what the, the uh, premiums are at, at the money puts and calls, but out of the money puts and calls. So if someone's buying something because they think it's going higher, maybe they're more likely to buy something close to the money opposed to way out of the money. And if no one's buying out of the money puts and calls, eh, they're pretty sanguine. They don't think the market's going higher or lower. But almost always it is uh, buying protection to the downside uh, for the VIX, uh, whether or not they're buying the VIX itself or uh, just uh, uh, going uh, and buying puts uh, in uh, stocks that they own. But it, it's a, I like that as a better indicator. Uh, one, the, as you'll see the equity column on this chart, it just doesn't change that much. It occasionally does, and that's a really big signal um of bullish and bearishness but for the most part it's been hovering around the same part for a while um got a little bit of a dip down to 52 on the third and of course that's when i started pulling the trigger uh, so you get a little bit of uh, the same thing but uh you want to see at those bottoms uh the equity put call and the vix expand but you're going to see the the vix probably expand uh, when we do have a bottom, it'll probably come in at about 85 or 90 for the day. Uh, kind of like the the uh, trend and the tick 
You see everybody deciding to do one thing at one time, and it's generally wrong. Uh, what else do we have to do? Uh, we got a little history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1887, Buffalo Bill's Wild West show opens in London, giving Queen Victoria and her subjects the first look at real cowboys and Indians. In 1872, Edward Johnson uh, also convinced Cody to travel to Chicago to star in a stage version of the book. Uh, Judson had written a book about, I don't know, a few years before that, uh, one of those pulp fiction novels uh, of the uh, late 1800s, or 1900s, 1800s. Uh, and uh, it was, a, it was the, a monster success, a blockbuster, a summer blockbuster, if you would, if they had movies back then. Uh, Cody broke with Judson just after a year, but he enjoyed the life of a performer and was making oodles and oodles of money. Stayed on this stage for 11 seasons more. Uh, that kind of ran its course, and then he started the Wild West show uh, uh, and started putting it a big tent. Uh, that was uh, pretty much uh, successful into about 1910 with the movie theaters actually opening up. People kind of looked uh, elsewhere for their fun, uh, but uh, he remained on the road for almost 30 years, a lot longer than he was hung, hunting buffalo or fighting uh, Indians in the Great West. And, of course, uh, what we know about the Great West, uh, almost all of it's wrong. Uh, the right part of uh, this was uh, that uh, what we got from the movies was mostly from his Wild West show that developed over those 30 years. Uh, okay, what else do we have going on in the market? You can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, and uh, you can do other things also. Email me at pathdfnn.com, as Pete did. He wants to know about uh, HYLD. And we will take a look at that. I think I've got it there. We'll take a look at it. Okay. Um, and uh, how about a 50-day moving average, first time six October? What's the significance to this, the high-yield debt market? Well, you know, we are under pressure in the bond market. Of course, uh, for anything we do, uh, the CHICOMs will probably – do uh, something to counteract it, at least somewhat. My only thought is that if those guys blow up, they've got a 1929 kind of bank crisis. Um, at least we may have some of that, but it won't be near uh, that. And as long as they have far more to lose than us, I think a lot of this stuff is going to cor get corrected. Um, I told a, a month ago, two months ago, three months ago, that this trade deal was not going to be solved instantly. I thought it was going to take more than a year to get done, and it probably still is. Uh, markets go up and markets go down. I wouldn't put a lot of emotional significance uh, for me and my future or your future on whether the market goes up or down. Uh, and, of course, uh, I, I asked the other day, and I'm still asking, what is the alternative uh, to doing nothing? about the issues with China. And I haven't heard a lot of alternate theories of how we can make them uh, act more uh, in the community of the world than else out there. Um, you know, you're back down to the support level on this HYLD. Um, I'm more of a fan of looking at the TLT uh, for what's going on, so we'll take a quick look at that. Uh, this is just back up to its previous level you really need it to break 126.69 to get a signal. Uh, right now, we don't have a lot of anything, either volume or others. Um, where do you get your information from the put call ratio and VIX for equity options? Off the CBOE website. Now, I do do a um, different version of the calculation for that. Do I still have this? Uh, yeah, that's one thing. Uh, where's my? I can load it again. Um, 
the way I look at it, and unfortunately on websites, you're going to see it done a different way. I think it uh, highly overrates um, the put call ratio. It makes it look a lot bigger than it probably should be and has a bigger emotional impact. But the way I look at it is the most that you can have is 100% of on the put call ratio. A lot of people make it look like you should have 150% put call ratio, right? Um, but yesterday what we saw were, you know, 130,000 more calls uh, than puts. And that tells me that people are not bearish. They're still bullish. And until they kind of uh, capitulate out there, we probably have a little bit more pain to go. And we'll talk about that when we come back. You can give me a call, 877-927-6648. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And I had a question during the break, where did I get this data? Well, the CBOE makes it uh, available all the way back to uh, 2006, I think. I have that. Um, I programmed it all, so I download it every night. I just click one button. But, of course, I'm a programmer. makes it easier for me. But I also put it in the newsletter every day so everybody can see what I'm looking at to make my determinations. Um, but uh, if you need the link to it for the VIX uh, data, 
um, just uh, go ahead and give me an email. Stan asked for it, so I'm going to send him that link, and I'm doing it right now. Uh, but you can too, path at tfnn.com. And of course, uh, since I've got it in a program, I had to actually open my program and <laughs> dig in here to find the URL for it. Uh, but it's a CSV, so you can load it into a, uh, a uh, spreadsheet if you want. Anyway, we were looking at the TLT as we came back up. What we're doing is just going back to this gap down from uh, April 1st that had 16.5 million shares. Um, you got about half that now, which is saying that there isn't enough juice to go break out this high of 126.69. And the question is, uh, what else is going on? But uh, I think mostly it's the trade issue. So um, uh, what did I do here? Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Um, oh, E-D-E-S-E. -S -E. Uh, I had an email here asking me about my trade on that one. Um, I was looking for it to get back up into 48, which was this island reversal back here from uh, March 8th. Uh, it got to 49, or was it, what was it, uh, high day? 49.39, got to 49.38 today. So as it was spiking through there, we went ahead and sold, but uh, we bought uh, back here, I think on that date, which was the second, uh, and it had a doji out there. I thought it was gonna just continue up. Pulled back a little bit down to, I think it closed at $40.20 on Friday, and then of course gapped up Monday morning. Um, and we sold out into that, but that was our target was 48 bucks. Uh, once it got to 49 this morning, we went ahead and sold it. Uh, and again, so when you can, not when you have to. Wasn't an investment, it was a trade, uh, but um, one of three that uh, last couple of days have paid off well for us or paid off. Um, and what else do we have? I got some more emails out here. Uh, the question is what to look at uh, for Facebook. So look at that. Uh, da, 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 okay. Um, no chart. Yeah, it did. It flipped off. I see that. I'm not exactly sure why. Let's do this again. And bring back up the charts. Should have that. Okay. Oh, what were we doing? Uh, oh, Facebook, that's what it was. Okay. Um, Facebook has pulled back. If you uh, were looking through the news today, one of the co-founders of Facebook basically calling uh, Mark Zuckerberg everything I've called him, which is a sociopath, uh, maybe worse, uh, a the equivalent of a child molester for free speech. I think you could say that. Uh, saying that the company should be uh, uh, busted up. Uh, and uh, why well, he didn't say it, kind of close to calling him what I always call him, which is Citizen Kane. Him and Bezos both uh, have reached levels to uh, crush anybody with a dissenting opinion that they have. Uh, and maybe there needs to be something done about it. I, I worry about the government trying to tell them what they can and cannot say. Um, I do think that Facebook, uh, Amazon, uh, and others uh, have shown every um, uh, effort to restrict competition against antitrust laws. And if anybody ever pushed it, certainly it would be there. Um, not a lot of effect today, but uh, I think there's enough juice for both uh, Republicans and Democrats uh, to go after Facebook. I hope that the cure isn't worse than what we have now uh, in the uh, the uh, SFCC a couple of years ago. Uh, we had uh, Board of Governors actually saying that they hated what other people said. They were gonna make sure that you couldn't get to them on the internet. Uh, if we have fascists like that, uh, I mean, free speech is where Everything uh, for our rights starts with. It's backed up by this, uh, backed up by the Second Amendment, and uh, all the amendments flow down from there. Without that kind of stuff, um, well, we'd have a king instead of a president and well, 535 elected officials. 
nationally and, of course, local, state, all the rest. Anyway, off my soapbox on that, Facebook going to face uh, a day uh, before the man. And my guess is that they're four times or 100 times more guilty than Microsoft was in 2000. It's going to be incredibly tough for them to lie once they get dragged in and everybody has to start saying, well, you know, I guess I'm going to have to tell the truth because I'm going to jail if they catch me in a lie. Um, and that's it. I would think that you've kind of got a couple of those setups up here that tell you that Facebook, eh, probably to a lesser expense, uh, extent, Twitter, are going to face uh, uh, problems of antitrust and probably regulations uh, putting them more on the level of a telecommunications a company and having to uh, um, at least uh, allow free speech. I think that's probably the best way to put it. Right now, um, incredibly evil. I guess that's probably the best thing that you could say about Zuckerberg and his crony of evil weasels um, molesting free speech at every turn. But, uh, eh. What can you say? Generally, that stuff does catch up into the market. It just doesn't do it all at one time. Okay. Uh, other things I'm going on here. Okay. Got that. Got that. Got that. Okay. Got that. Okay. Microsoft, is it a buy here? Um, I think you could still continue on. As I've said before, the scenarios that I've looked at is if we pull back into uh, the three-day weekend coming up for Memorial Day, probably one of the bearish or one of the most bullish setups that you can get. Uh, uh, right now, I'm suspecting uh, that we kind of play around uh, in this area of uh, 2850 to maybe 2890 on the S&P cash, and we do that for. And maybe into next Wednesday, everybody finally gets very bearish and starts betting on the downside. Maybe we get a huge uh, run come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week. But to me, I think that's kind of what it looks like right now. I don't see any big sign of a tradable bottom just yet. Uh, but if it continues along like this, all we need is a lot of people actually getting bearish for us. And that probably will set up a, a squeeze and maybe even a squeeze into that three-day weekend coming up. But uh, at the moment, uh, I don't see any big plays. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the options curves and what I saw last night uh, in those. And that give you a little hint. Don't see anything. Again, wait for the whites of their eyes. Kind of my motto for this month. Be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, go to Steve in Houston. How you doing today, Steve? Dave, I'm doing well. I love your sense of humor and your approach to things. It really makes me laugh a lot. Um, <laughs> I was uh, wanting to look at uh, the, this high tech stuff. Um, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Zuckerberg and uh, Bezos or Bezos, whatever his name is. I call him Doctor Evil, the Mike Meyer <laughs> character. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I was wondering what your thought was on uh, Intel with it getting slammed like it is right now. Well, you, did you hear my uh, call on this after the earnings call and before no. that with the new with the new CEO? No. Okay. Because back when me, they it looks finally like got going to go back and fill that gap around forty one or something. Is that right? Yeah. Here's kind of the history of CEOs for okay. technology. You need kind of, you watch Star Trek, right? The original one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah the captain was kind of a gambler, and you had uh, Spock was nothing but but uh, all, uh, all logic. Uh, that's kind yeah. of what it, you want in a CFO. It's not what you want in the captain of the ship. And Correct. they've got kind of this weasel-like uh, CFO that ran around uh, with a lot of uh, palace and intrigue, got the old CEO kicked out for something that happened like 10 years ago, and then proceeded to work internally to get power and become the CEO. Um, in the very short term, uh, I said, you know, you're probably going to have a little rally uh, as he cuts a lot of the dead wood out of the market. And that final gap up was them saying that they were getting out of 5G up to 59.59. So everybody kind of liked that little gap up uh, on the Qualcomm Apple news uh, that they were at least weren't going to throw money down a rat hole. That's what they like about CFOs. They do cut uh, the dead wood out of the companies. What they don't like is a total lack of vision to drive these companies to new heights. And another thing is that he is continuing to cut out a lot of the dead wood. Uh, and trying to get that out of the way. So in the future, things look kind of rosier for him. But especially when you get uh, CFOs that leave uh, not on their own terms, it's not uncommon for at least the person that takes over to go into the books and find anything that's questionable and write it off right now. And I think we've kind of got a, a couple of those things going on right now. Uh, not a lot of faith. Uh, in the new CFO, because he's more of a, what would you call him, a politician than a, a CEO? And yes. why we don't, as traders, spend a lot of time looking at him, there's a handful of stocks where it really makes a difference. And in technology stocks, it's how many people can not just take risk, but take good risk, right? And mm -hmm. you find that generally, 
um, CFOs make really stupid uh, kind of uh, acquisitions like um, buying AOL in 2000 or, uh, you know, Microsoft wanted to buy Yahoo at a massively inflated rate. Finally, they were going to throw uh, Balmer out of Microsoft. What was it, 2007 or something? Uh, out if he bought um, Yahoo. So that was kind of, I mean, Microsoft kind of dodged a bullet there. But the history of CFOs is kind of like what you have in Apple now. A lot of failed products for a variety of reasons. They have a big, uh, they, they tend to not know a lot of the nuts and bolts of what's going on in the company. And uh, people that track, uh, the analysts that actually track, not the stuff that you read, but the stuff that they actually know and tell the people inside is, uh, you know, this guy doesn't really know much about the company. He may uh, have a very sharp pencil, but you're not going to find him spending a lot of money or making the right decision of where to put the money and gamble on future products. So, I mean, for the most part, uh, Apple has been kind of lucky so far, but they've had one good product come out uh, since Steve Jobs left. So it's pretty much all legacy. The question is, what's their left? And that's the same question I suspect that everybody's asking for after earnings uh, in Intel, which is, okay, you didn't do well on earnings. Now what are you going to do? And I don't think that there was a big answer out there. The guy that they had running the company was doing a, a pretty good job. Uh, but like I said, there's, you know, you get a weasel in there, and I kind of put the guy that's running Intel right now in the weasel skunk category uh, for running around uh, with the palace intrigue without a real uh, vision for the future. Uh, it's kind of just the opposite of what we got from Microsoft when Bomber left and we got somebody that truly understood the business that they were in. Now the, you know, Microsoft can't be stopped. And Intel could be like that, but I think it's going to take a year or so until they fire this guy and figure out that uh, the emperor wears no clothes. Um, like I said, when he took over, I was very short-term bullish and kind of long-term bearish on Intel. Does that yeah, answer? I mean, gotta... that's not even without even looking at the chart. You're going to okay. find a lot of people uh, in Wall Street. They're taking the long term view. What happened in the last three months doesn't matter to them. They're wondering a year, two years, three years from now, and they see some kind of goofball get in here that is, uh, you know, good with the long knives and planting them in the back of other people he works with. And it's probably not the guy you want running the company. You want somebody that's you know, kind of uh, rallying the troops, not uh, having them all duck and cover every time he, he looks your way. So this would be something you'd avoid and just stay away from then, huh? At the moment, I can't see why. I, I think this is a company It has a lot of great products uh, that are in here. And I think as soon as the CFO changes, which I think they'll get tired of them in a year, but it may take that long. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, because uh, I know there's a, a gap in uh, the stock down around 41 or something like that uh, back a couple of years ago, and it never got filled. And yeah. um, I was thinking, well, maybe it, it should probably get down to that 40, 41 level. Yeah, uh, but, but again, what are you going to do, bounce to 45? I don't like the risk-reward until the CEO is gone. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Okay. That, makes a, I've that seen, makes a lot of sense because that would make sense on a technical basis too because it may, it may drop down all the way down there until you, till they, they straighten the company out too. So Right. And right. He, why this guy is a good CFO, I just don't, you know, a lot of the issues they have, they need somebody like they had, not this guy who doesn't know that much. And, uh, uh, you know, it just doesn't see. Uh, do you guess that Intel CEO was indeed part of the group that engineered out the previous CEO? And the answer is yes. That's just somebody asking something in the tiger's den. But yeah, from okay. everything I read, I you know I have no actual knowledge. But yeah, apparently this guy went and was digging for dirt on this guy and went back for 10 or 12 years to find it. Thanks for the call. We'll be back Good, in a minute. Thank you, Dave. Good info. Okay.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And what else do we have going on here? That's uh, kind of it. We're going to wrap up the show with what I suspect is going to happen. Of course, uh, no big mystery. We had about $12 billion sucked out of the market. That money had to come from somewhere, uh, along with the, the tariff issue. Uh, markets were already weak, uh, and we've seen a fairly strong move down on a lot of these stocks. Um, just because I think maybe we're done going down for a little while does not mean that we're going up. Uh, I think we could probably get a couple of days of a squeeze. I think the way that that normally sets up is maybe some kind of retest of today's lows next Wednesday. Uh, if everybody gets bearish, then we'll have enough shorts to go squeeze maybe for a couple of days. Ideally, uh, so far, what we're looking for, uh, or what at least I'm speculating is going to happen, is that we're going to pull back into the three-day weekend going into June. We're going to do it on light volume, uh, and it's just going to get down there, and we're going to have probably some of the best buys of the year in this market, and everybody's probably going to give up on trying to figure out uh, when the trade deal is going to get done. We'll get back to fundamentals. This market's probably going to move along much better uh, without this uh, deal that's, always uh, been where 
I thought people were going to instantly sell, thinking that the top was in. I think we could rejoin, make enough uh, energy going on this summer to get back up. Uh, and if the earnings continue to come through, as they have been, I think the next time we get back up there, maybe you know, end of the summer, maybe in October, we'll bust through those highs and go to all time time highs um long time speculation but uh i think that's it i think we're looking at maybe one of the best setups for the next big run to go break out to new ones but it's going to take a while don't get too excited just yet in the meantime sell when you can not when you have to we'll see you here tomorrow same bat channel same bat channel.